Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Delzy, a 60-minute conversation delivering insights and best practices from industry experts and, more importantly, your peers from around the country to help bring the espresso to your practice. I'm your host, Matt Delzingaro, or Delzy for short, and I'm so grateful to have all of you here today. So today we have a special two for one, if you will. I've asked founder and CEO of Wealth IO, Jonathan Michael, Michael, along with one of your peers, another fellow advisor, Ryan Simonis, with Clear uh, Financial Vision. I'm going to have both of them share their thoughts around AI. Is it a threat? You'll determine that by the end of this 60 minutes. And what I love about the two guests that we have here today is they come from either side of the fence. On the one hand, you got Jonathan who talks the talk. He's our tech nerd or tech geek. Sorry, Jonathan, that offends you. And then on the other hand, you have Ryan, who's someone who walks the walk, if you will. And he's used this technology, this tech engine to drive sales. So in fact, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. You've accumulated about $12 million in new assets just over the t- last 12 months utilizing this software, this engine, correct? Yeah, we're on track to finish the year that way. Yeah. That's awesome. Folks, here's what I want you to do. Jonathan, I'm going to start with you just to give us a little background of who you are, what's Wealth.io, and how do you help advisors be more productive in less time and less effort? Yeah, Matt, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to be on. So at at Wealth.io, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build an end-to-end marketing platform for financial advisors. So typically the way we've seen it done is advisors are scraping off the internet, trying to find appointments, sending LinkedIn messages, asking friends and family for referrals, or using email automations to grow their lead pipeline. What Wealthio Tech does is that it helps grab that initial interest and capture attention and give a potential prospect enough reason to actually show up on an appointment. So that's step one. That's the most important part, right? What is your unique selling proposition? Uh, That is what Wealthio lets advisors do really well. Branding, marketing, advice engagement, that's what we do. So uh, we're still building out more tech. Our vision is to be an end-to-end platform. You capture leads. We nurture the leads through an app called My Financial Pro, which we think is going to be an alternative to email marketing. Open rates are not great. Click-through rates are not great today with email marketing, and it doesn't really drive engagement. And then finally, you have lead conversion, right? You generate leads, great, capture attention. you got to nurture them through something that's going to add value consistently. And then the last bit is that you've got to convert them to a client. And so we have appointment booking features built into our products to, to enable that. And of course, inside the My Financial Pro app as well. So all in all, Wealth.io is building the end-to-end marketing stack, and it's all powered with generative AI to help you save time with emails and writing content and so on and so forth. So awesome. awesome. Well, so welcome to the show. I appreciate it. And that little background. Ryan, why don't you share a little bit about yourself, your firm, and how long you've been in the business and the demographic of your firm? Sure. Yeah, I've been in the business. I actually got started at a pretty young age. I got started when I was 19 years old. I got fully licensed. And so I've been in the business almost six years now. And I basically served two markets pretty equally. And one is kind of 25 to 50. They're this high earners kind of market, but they're not rich yet. I like to call them Henry. High earners, not rich yet. And we focus a lot of just coaching, working them through, getting started, building their, starting their Roth IRA monthly investments, getting their term life insurance in place, making sure they have a will, right? And then we do a lot of work in the older market, working, we partner with Medicare providers and tax estate planners to provide a holistic picture for them. And most of their concerns is, hey, is my money going to last? I don't want to outlive my money. And I want to have somebody walk alongside and provide value and and, uh, guidance. Yeah, we've been having a blast. Um, It's been an amazing time in this career. Best time to be in this industry, in my opinion. And there's so much need for for people that have a heart to serve. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that background. Jonathan, I'm going to start with you just because you're 
creating this engine on behalf of advisors and to, to utilize and take advantage. And obviously, Ryan is a perfect example of who's really taken this and has run with it, if you will. Now, let's set the stage here. So about five to 10 years back, now, Ryan, this might be before you came on board, went to the industry. We were having the threat or hearing about the term robo-advisors, firms like Betterment, firms like Vanguard, and we're going to replace humans as the new wave of financial advice, right? Uh, replacing all of you on this call, right? You guys, the advisor. So we soon realized that the personal touch can never be replicated and or replaced. So certainly when selling intangible things like financial advice. So nearly a decade later, because we saw that fizzle out, it wasn't such a threat, right? The personal touch is still there. So now we have a new foe who's entered the field and that's artificial intelligence or AI, and which many are now saying game, set, match, right? So Jonathan, why do you believe that AI won't be replace the human side of financial advice and that you're betting on yourself and your company that it will all pay off? So why is that? I'd like to start off with a quick illustration and a story, really. And I try to use the story when I usually end up with discussions around AI replacing advisors. And about last year, I was in Michigan meeting with a potential investor and he had a real estate background. And I was showing him my tech and people were just getting on the trend and they love, a lot of tech investors love using the word disruption. It makes them sound extra sophisticated. So they'll throw it around and just to sound extra sophisticated, I don't know. So I showed him the tech and he was like, why not just disrupt advisors completely? Why not just build an end-to-end -end AI system and just disrupt the heck out of them? And so I responded back with a question and I asked him, you work in real estate, right? And you work with a lot of real estate agents and real estate companies. So if you go to buy a million dollar house, would you like to get a interactive tour by your robot at the doorstep? Just asking, would you too many clients who close a deal with a robot with a mechanical arm? And he was like, gave a pretty vague response. And that's how I'd like to draw that illustration with AI as well. When it comes to money, people, it's really an emotional decision. And if you think that people are going to save money for their retirement with a robot, you're mistaken. I don't think that humans are capable of trusting robots to that extent right now. Let's look at actual numbers. What's the data? What does the data show us? And just to before I jump on the numbers, AI is not new. Okay. The robots that started off like five, 10 years ago, that is a subset of AI called machine learning. What's brought everything to the forefront today is ChatGPT. And people are looking at this interface and being like, wow, it's so intelligent. It's so amazing. It can probably replace me. So machine learning is what triggered off ro robo, advi robo advisory. And th that's a subset of AI. So it's not something that's new. What we are seeing that's new today is generative AI, generative artificial intelligence, right? Or kind of signs of super intelligence in a way. I think that it's the, the data tells a very interesting story. About two trillion dollars of assets under management are with robots today, right? Vanguard's leading that, Fidelity, Betterment, and whatever. Versus 113 of assets under management today with advisors. And that number is set to grow at 15, 25% year on year, which is decent growth. But I don't think there's anything to be worried about from a robot advisory context, right? And the last thing I'd want to say is. Think of AI as self-driving cars. It's like your operating system. If self-driving cars are not going to replace cars, right? You're going to automate a lot of that driving. You're not going to waste time trying to figure out how to shift lanes and whatever. Like you can do something else in that time, right? And it's going to reduce a lot of accidents. I think advisors should think of AI like the way we think of self-driving cars today. AI is going to help you do a lot more creative work it's going to help you focus on creating original thought leadership, focus less on figuring out active campaign or Canva, right? And instead focus on reading, uh, focus on providing great advice, really studying portfolios, being able to offer real advice to people. So I think AI is going to empower advisors to, to be super advisors, right? right. So that's what, I, that's what I think. That's how I think advisors should think about that. And not be worried about that. Just be, just understand machine learning is different from generative AI and AI is not a new thing. It's been around for, it's been around for a long time. 
what's creating a lot of buzz and all this worry around AI replacing jobs is chat GPT and the, these text-based models. So the text-based models that you're looking at chat GPT and you're looking at it, compute all these amazing sentences, chat GPT is not going to try to build relationships for you. Chat GPT is not going to empathize with you. Chat GPT is not going to do a lot of things that a client would need to actually start working with a, an advisor. So I want to just draw that distinction and just let me, so I, I love how you you set that up because I think what you're drawing the conclusion is that don't fear that AI is coming in as an adversary, if you will, but almost like the advisors who don't accept AI, if you will, might be left behind. That's the true fear. It's not that it's not going to replace you. It's that, hey, if you don't implement AI into your practice, you might be left behind. Would you? Would that be the, the greater fear? I think another way to phrase that would be it would dramatically slow down your potential growth, right? So that does amount to being left behind in some way. And what AI is really great at doing today is like automating all these repetitive tasks, right? What would take you one hour to create a blog post is now going to take you five minutes. Creating an image for a blog post is going to take you two hours, maybe to design in Canva. And hiring someone may cost you $500, $600, maybe $3,000, $4,000, depending on which marketing agency you choose to go with. But I think that advisors who don't embrace these AI tools and don't learn how to use AI to become original thought leaders, I just want to stress on that word, right? Because that is what AI is freeing up advisors to do, is becoming original thought leaders and being able to focus time on create and learning and focusing time on education. Everything still stays the same, just like what it was two years ago. You still got to do that. But now you have an expert content writer on steroids who can create a hundred blog posts for you if you can feed it the right content, right? right? So if you don't do that, and if you don't create original content, if you are not trying to educate your audience, if you're not embracing these AI tools, yes, you will be left behind. You will you will probably still have the same clients working with you, but it will dramatically slow down your growth. Yeah. So, Ryan, I want to bring you in here. How do you implement this? So one of the statistics I've seen is that AI and wealth management business has improved efficiency by 30%. Ryan, how are you implementing this into your practice and how are you saving time? What's it doing for you? So when I got started in the business, I was trained to use a 45-minute presentation, PowerPoint. And I was trained to call people up and say, hey, I was, you guys know the whole thing. Hey, start with your family and friends, start with people that you're close to, and then just see if you can schedule time to talk to them. It felt like I was um, trying to convince, trying to persuade people that weren't really ready. They weren't really interested in talking quite yet. And that was the business that I got started into. I was trained by a gentleman. I love him to death. He just had a, a little bit more of an archaic way of doing things, in my opinion. And you know, here I am in my early 20s and he's, hey, make a phone call. And I'm like, that's just not what we do. We text, we communicate, we like to create dialogue and create conversation, but we don't want to be convincing or salesy. So I just got started on this journey. I read a book by Donald Miller called Story Brand. Um, and it just talked about how an advisor is the guide. The client is always the hero, right? And our job is to position ourselves in a way that they see us and they see, hey, somebody can lead me, they can guide me. And they're busy, right? All of our prospects have a lot of things going on. What our job is to do in a short period of time, position ourselves as a professional that can guide them to where they want to go. And so I got really laser focused the past five years on what is the problem that we're solving? And in all of you guys, if you sat down and thought about your markets, all of them would probably say they know where they want to go financially, but they don't have clear direction on how to get there. And what we like to use is technology that, you know, through Wealth.io that basically works as a GPS for your money. It can help show somebody from how to go from where they are to where they want to go, really worry less about money, enjoy life more. It's going to help them create a, a clear list of action steps that we can sit down and implement with them. And they're the ones in control every step of the way. And they see these video messages. They have texts for me, conversation with me. So my system on the marketing side, the prospecting side is all about creating dialogue and you're right. I do that one-on-one -on -one most of the time. I do have a, a presence on social media, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. But my, my goal there is to more kind of promote a personal brand, right? I'm, I'm most of my communications one-on-one, -on -one, 
using a system that's creating dialogue with people. And I believe, just to answer your question, how does AI affect? I believe we're in this kind of world, I like to call it high tech and high touch. We're in a world that if you want to connect with this, especially the younger generations, and you think about the great wealth transfer, there's about $68 trillion plus or minus that's estimated to be transferred over the next 20 years from the baby boomer generation to the millennial generation. In order to be on and to stay engaged and to, and to connect with a lot of that business that's going to be coming, we have to be able to communicate with people in a way that they communicate. And I believe leveraging the technology is so important. It will never replace the human touch, though. People always want to hear a, a human voice, a, an advisor, not just setting up their plan, but every three to six months afterwards just to stay in touch with them. And that's never going to get replaced by AI, in my opinion, because this business is all about trust. But if you had a system that, can, that could automate the trust building process and create prospects that are ready to go, it helps you save time, like Jonathan saying, makes your business and your life so much more efficient. And you're spending time with people when they're ready to talk to you. Because I have a system that's creating that dialogue, helping them understand their most important number in their financial life. It's called their FIN, their financial intelligence number, helping them understand what's the path to get there. And so by the time I'm meeting with people, they're ready to go. So that high tech, high touch combination you know, is really what we need to have in this world. You have to learn how to use it and use it to your advantage. But a lot of ways you can market, but I think that high tech, high touch is so important. Why don't we get into how you guys are utilizing this and how this is saving you guys, or at least Ryan, you saving you so much time from the data gathering and the first meeting. Oh, let me get back to you. Let me put something together where as now you have now cut that out by using the software, you're doing the data gathering beforehand. You already have a game plan going into the first appointment. The clients already know some hiccups or holes in their plan, right? Because the AI, the platform is actually telling them, Hey, these are some alerts. How do you guys get so much more efficient? All right, guys, here's the magic. So if you guys look on my phone too, I have, every time I connect and network with people, I have a QR code set up. I don't know if you can see my screen okay, but. Yeah, we can see. And on, on my uh, QR code, that basically leads them directly to my digital business card. And they can basically get on here. They can connect with me via social media. They want to check out our, our site. They can check this out. I did have a, a profile video created that basically shares two to three minute video of my story. They can share contact info, but the experience really starts here saying, hey, let's watch to discover your financial intelligence number. And this plays a, a short video that basically walks them through what that number is, uh, why it's important. And it basically it calculates the amount of money that they need to have saved or invested. So one day they can stop working for money. It's really important to help people calculate that number and then work backwards from it and create a good game plan. And then... But the goal is to ultimately lead them through this experience called FinPath. I'll go ahead and Jonathan, I'm assuming it'd be good to walk them through a little bit of this if you want to jump into and share. Sure. Yeah. If you're on the first screen, uh, I think this is a great screen to start on. And right here. Yep. what we're trying to do here, as Ryan mentioned, Fin is like the starting point. It's a short retirement quiz, helps you calculate what that number you're going to need when you retire, right? It's super quick, engaging, intuitive. We won't spend too much time on the financial intelligence number, which Ryan showed on the digital business card, but where the Fin leads to is that it leads to FinPath, as the name suggests, even in the name of the product, right? Mm -hmm. And what's going on here with this screen is part of what we would call a tech-enabled referral marketing strategy. So as Chelsea mentioned, a lot of you are using referrals to grow. And I think 85% of advisors still use referrals to grow. And we're like, we have a two-prong approach. We believe you need to have that cold market approach and create content with AI, but also you need to have a tech-enabled referral marketing strategy. And what we mean by that is when you ask friends and family or existing clients to refer you more clients, you can use FinPath as your tool to empower them, right? And Ryan mentioned automating the trust building process. That's exactly what FinPath is going to do for them. Because on the first screen right there, you can see Ryan's got a video message right on the front. And Ryan, can you just play that video message for them? And we'll watch that and we'll jump right into the rest. Now, if you have a vision of where you would like to go, the next step is to create a clear path to get there. After this short video message, FinPath will be unlocked for you. It is a free assessment tool that quickly identifies the specific action steps that you can take to get to your goals based on what you qualify for financially. 
It also helps you avoid and correct costly mistakes over time. So again, you can imagine like friends and family or referees who are seeing this for the first time, they know who Ryan is. They have an idea of what they're going to get as a result of going through the questionnaire. They can click on Ryan's picture there on the top left next to his logo, and they can see his firm's name. They can see his picture there. And he, if you click on that, it goes to your digital business card again, right? So branding and marketing is going on in FinPath, right? At the same time, it's going to automate that trust building process and help you get right into advice when your appointment begins. So what do we mean by that? How does advice engagement really begin? And how does the advice engagement component fit here? Ryan, if you can just enter your first name, last name, and email address there and kick off FinPath, we'll just show them the first screen of how the FinPath, uh, you'll need to add a, is that your email? Like your actual email or is? It is, yeah. Okay. So you'll get a one-time passcode and then you can enter that. So yeah, yeah. perfect. So yeah, so Ryan's going to get a one-time passcode now in his email, and he's going to enter that here to verify if that was the correct email. So for compliance and security, we built that feature in. Now, what FinPath does here is it's going to customize the questions based on these unique parameters. Who's on your financial journey? Okay, Ryan has a spouse. Great. Her name is Emma. She's 23. Perfect. Okay, based on all these unique parameters, FinPath will change its questions. Okay, okay, click on continue. And you guys can see here some, some yeah. people are single, some people are married, they're engaged, right? So just depending on where they're at, um, it's going to then spit out a, a list of active questions based off of that. So it's going to save you time with the typical data gathering process. So are you single? Are you married? Wasting, we're wasting time on that. We just don't see the value in it. So anyways, so just to show you a quick uh, snapshot of what the design looks like. It's so easy to click, like you almost want to click on it, right? It's just simple tiles. You go to the next screen. What are some of your biggest financial stressors? You click an option there, you click on the next screen. So on and on you go, right? On the top right corner, you can see chat with Ryan. You can click on that and you can engage with Ryan through a chat conversation in case you're stuck on a screen and you don't know how to respond, right? It's going to make it engaging. It's going to help you connect with the advisor, help a new client connect with the advisor. And we have English translation there as well. Okay, cool. So you saw the video message. You saw Ryan's picture there on the first screen. Great. You had a prospect go through FinPath. Now at the end of FinPath, and for the sake of time, we're not going to go through the entire FinPath journey. But at the end of the FinPath questionnaire, there's going to be another video message. And that video message is from Ryan again, and he is asking clients to book an appointment with him. So we've sandwiched video marketing here to make it super simple and easy for an advisor to communicate their value proposition to a warm market, people who don't know them, yeah. know them at least. So that's what FinPath is doing here. But th this is fantastic. It's giving them a baseline of what they're going through, but really the power is, as at the end, is just... The, the alerts and things like that, it makes Ryan, your life so much easier when you go into that first appointment. That is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and pull up an example of what it looks like afterwards and give you guys a, a little snapshot. But before I do that, if you guys just think about this, I'm sitting here, I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm building relationships. I'm going to networking events. I'm getting my referrals coming in. And if you guys aren't at the point yet, you're going to be at the point soon where you're like, hey, my time is extremely valuable. I, I want to make sure I'm spending time with the right people and I want to make sure that when I have an in-person meeting or a Zoom call with a prospect that, that we're, we're using our time well. And so if I can automate that relationship building process here, check out my video, my story, go on the system here, figure out your fin, go through FinPath, some like homework or like a prerequisite to like that first meeting or that second meeting. When you come into that meeting, they're walking through FinPath and they're coming into this with... Just a lot of, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. Yeah. You're coming into this with essentially a, a clear list of action steps that you can take to help them move forward and take some steps. So there's an example. This is a test that I did. So I'm just not sharing any confidential information or anything. So I'm just basically walking through, hey, I had somebody go through FinPath. It creates three types of alerts. One's called a well-done alert. Saying things like, hey, you're maximizing your IRA contributions. 
you have no debt, you took time to assess your finances, you have an emergency fund, right? There's checkpoints. There's some high priority alerts. Hey, you don't have a will. You should be investing into your Roth. You have a lot of money sitting in your bank account earning less than 2%. And the way I present that to a client is I actually hit this kind of start presentation. And this is how I do my meetings. You know, walk through and say, hey guys, let's start by visiting things you're doing well. Yeah, you're maximizing your personal IRA contributions. And there's a little blog here or a little, little blurb there you can just read talking through a hey, great job maximizing contributions. An action step you can take is just discuss hey, the best option for you. Make sure that you're optimizing your investments to make sure it aligns with your goals. If I want to take some notes here, I can take some notes that I can go follow up with later and send to them walking through all this is just a phenomenal tool to, to kind of do that first meeting with them. Coming into the checkpoints, hey, a checkpoint, and this is a really good question to help us close the investment business. One of the questions in FinPath, it says, are you confident with how your investments are being managed? And there's one of the options they can select is, I am pretty confident, but I would like to have a second opinion. And so this is a checkpoint that pops up at the end. So seeking a second opinion on your investment strategy is a smart move to align with your goals and risk tolerance. An outside perspective brings valuable insights. Right. So on this meeting here, I can say, hey, what kind of investments do you have? And start gathering some information about them and say, hey, OK, on our next meeting, I'd love for you to bring your statements. So that way we can go over them, take a look at how they're invested and just do a side by side comparison of what we would recommend. So there's the checkpoints. Now it's going to move on to the high priority alerts. And based off how they answer the questions, it really helps them long term, essentially create a good game plan. So this is just a brief run through. And there's a little map at the end here. It shows you know, the well done, their checkpoints, their priorities. It'll show the notes that I took with them. And I can even send, them, send this to them just directly here. So just give them a quick snapshot. And now I can do what I'm best at and start implementing the game plan. I can start walking them through. Hey, let's get your IRA set up. Let's make sure you get your will done. Let's take these steps. And I want you guys to tell me what's your highest priority that you want to you know, start with first. Let's, let's start with, let's, let's pick three and let's, let's take care of those. And what you're doing is you're helping them holistically and they're going to actually stay with you long-term. You're going to build that retention because you've touched them in all these different areas. It sets you apart from any other financial advisor that's very product-centered to make you more of an actual guide and, 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 a, and a person that comes alongside to help them holistically. So anyway, is that helpful, Matt? Yeah, Ryan, that was awesome. And here's what I, I think what's going through the advisor's minds on the call. Personally, what's going through my mind is one, is this replacing be money guy pro or is this a compliment and, and and number two is from your experience because you said you have both you have the Henry's and then you have the older folks the 60 year olds are close to retirement what's your experience there are you are they willing to go through with the 60 65 year olds or are you doing that in front of them you, you touch on both of them yeah uh, I'll let Jonathan comment on the the first question uh, but I'll just answer the second question real quick and just say I have everybody that is willing to go through this. I think this technology is perfect for any market. I think I told you when we were talking the other day, Matt, that I found that the tech side of things tends to resonate with a little bit 50 and, and younger markets. Yep. Just they're naturally doing that more. But I encourage all my older clients to go through this if they are able to. So you guys know how it is. Some clients are like, they only have tech set up on their phone. So it's just, but the future is this. So whether it's not, maybe not them initially, but their kids, they should have the, all their kids go through FinPath. I'm using this with every single meeting in some way, shape or form to help guide our conversations. And so I think it's a, just a phenomenal resource. But yeah, Jonathan, you want to comment on uh, eMoney and all that? Yeah. So eMoney and Smart Asset and the other financial planning heavy tools, they don't automate the tr trust building process. They begin the planning process, which means they have the client already sold until that point, and they're just ready to begin the planning process. What we do is we do the heavy work on the top end, on the top end of the funnel to create that initial interest, automate the trust building with FinPath, gather the data, offer immediate value on the Zoom appointment, and get the client to take action steps. That is why they're called financial alerts. And that's why they're called high priority alerts. And that's why it's in intentionally at the end of the presentation. So the high priority alerts drive a client towards taking action 
when the client decides they want to take action, that's when we pass off the baton to the asset maps and the e-monies of the world and the financial planning softwares, and they can do all of that. But what's going to create that initial interest for a client to work with you? It's not your financial planning software. Correct. If I can make a comment real quick, every advisor, I've talked to a lot of advisors the past six years, and just the struggles I hear is not, oh, I need to have better planning software. The struggle is I need to have more appointments. <laughs> the struggle is I need to have more qualified prospects. And how do I do that? And what they're running into is this challenge of how do I take people who are busy, they, they don't have time to sit down or come into my office and watch a PowerPoint. How do I nurture and create dialogue with people in a professional value giving way to create that curiosity, but then also create the sense of urgency to have a meeting. And that's where I think that if you imagine the sale, you guys all hear the sales funnel, right? You got, I would imagine this system is like the top of the funnel. You're, you're, you're providing those touches, you're providing the value, you're, you're touching them in, in a, this high tech, high touch way. And instead of sending them, hey, can we meet at the office? You're saying, hey, if I sent you a quick your experience to help you discover your most important number in your financial life, you know, do you mind checking it out? And you can share with your friends and family, you can share with people you care about. Hey, if I sent you a link to an assessment tool, that will quickly help you share, figure out some action steps you can take in your financial life. That helped me out a lot. That's one of the reasons I got started in this business is because I saw the need. And I just want to share with you because I care about you. If I were to do that, would you mind checking it out sometime you know, later today or tomorrow? And then maybe we can hop on a Zoom call and just go over how it came back. But that's so much easier. And it's just a very, it's a fun way to do it. And I was telling my, my team, I'm like, hey, if you guys can do two appointment, two FinPath prospects a day, and you do that five days a week, and you do that over a course of three months, you're at a point where you've created so much dialogue and provided so much value for a lot of different people are going to start self. They're going to say, hey, I, I need help with this. I need help with this. I need help with this. Can you help me? And they're starting to look at you as this financial pro. And all you're doing is you're sharing this information that's already established for you. You're not having to take all this time out of your schedule to meet with every single one of them and ask them all these questions automated. And I just want to share that. It's just your heart should be to serve and, and provide value and, and you as a business owner and as a as an advisor, your your business is direct your growth in business is a direct relationship with how many people you serve and help. You shouldn't be in business to sell. And if you're in business to serve, using technology like this is gonna equip you and, and you're gonna exponentially help you grow. So um, so, so I what I'm seeing here, guys, and, and we're coming down to the end of the, the show, but what I'm seeing is that the power of saving you time, effort. And more importantly, my gosh, if you put a client through this or a prospect, I should say, and they're answering the questions or they just don't have the assets that they don't meet your requirements, like you didn't waste any time, right? There is no, let's schedule an appointment. Let's sit down. Let's go through your phone, do your discovery and all that. Then you got to come back and draw up a plan and all that. It, it is, I'm now I, I can see guys that the name of this show today, the theme was, is it against us or is it for us? And clearly, you know, with what Jonathan's doing with AI and taking advantage of AI and the intelligence and how it just puts it all together for you to have that perfect dialogue, you didn't have to do any work. Ryan, you could probably walk into an appointment five minutes before and you just have to go through the alerts and all that and just go, okay. It's done for me, right? Now, Basically. the plan done? No, but guess what? You're done 90% of the legwork before you even sat down with them. And that's where I think this is. This software is huge. So John, I, I'm telling your story, obviously, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure you have a thing. Can, can I show a demo of the yeah. other 5%? You said 90%, yeah. but there's another 5% that they haven't seen yet. So let's show that, right? Yeah. I just want to show you something. Um, Guys, remember, remember, there we go. We got two questions. So all right, so, my so what FinPath can do for you. You go through all the questions. You come to the screen right here. It's You can access it from our smart CRM. We call it the smart CRM, but all right, let's see. It's loading. Robin, okay. I'll get to your questions in a second. So this is an example of a smart CRM. You can see the prospect's name. So you can change the copy of the financial alerts that the software generates, right? So you can go in and you can change an action point or a homework point, right? Again, this action point is key because it's what drives a uh, prospective client towards action, all right? Okay, cool. So you started the presentation, you downloaded the FinPath report, you sent it off to them, great. 
Where does the rubber meet the road in this marketing process? Follow up. Okay, let's be honest, that is a hard job. Mm -hmm. And that is how AI can help automate a lot of that job for you. So you have technology that's generating the alerts and driving clients towards action, but then you've also got to send follow-up emails. And let me just go back to that for a second. Now, let's do a quick analysis. There's 45 different questions here, okay? And then there are alerts. So if you're an advisor and you want to follow up with someone after they went through FinPath, you're going to have to look through all the questions, look at the alerts, and then decide what kind of email should I send them to remind them about their FinPath summary. So we're going to talk about how AI is going to help streamline your follow-up process as an advisor, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a quick email to our AI asking it to write a follow-up email for this FinPath prospect. And I'm going to send it a prompt. And the reason why this is a way better secure option of creating uh, email content with AI is because it's centralized within, within our systems. Our databases are encrypted. And if you are trying to create any AI generated content around client specific data, it's secure and it's not on an open system like OpenAI or ChatGPT. So just wanted to share that quickly because it sets the precedent. So anyhow, so look at the email that the AI quickly generated, right? It wrote the subject line for the prospect as well, taking the next steps towards financial clarity. So it looked at all the different alerts and quickly wrote out some action points. And now, of course, you can go ahead and edit that and send it off to the client. But this is going to save you a lot of time. Uh, and it's really going to help you uh, add value in your follow-up process. So what is FinPad says really doing for you at the end of the day? It's offering you a better lifestyle, okay? It's offering <laughs> you more time to spend with your family. It's offering you more time to go and do what you really enjoy and enjoy the freedom that you got. That's what FinPath is doing at the end of the day. I, you know, you're while you're doing awesome. that, can I ask you guys a couple of questions? Can this be yeah. tailored to a high net worth client is the first one. Can you implement more advanced planning top topics like stock options, trusts, and things like that into this? Can this be tailored to a high net worth client? Yes. So those questions and answers, the questions that we have, it is designed for all kinds of client types. It's high level. Again, the questions, if you, if Bright House decides to do it for their entire company, for their entire broker dealer, that's a different story. We can go in and customize a lot of the questions and the alerts that are generated. But Long story short, the, the answer to that question is yes, it can, because you have control over the kind of action and homework points that you want to write. So, yeah. Okay. And it, can it touch on like stock options and things like that? That's a little more advanced or is that more into the detail, getting into more of the financial planning software and that's, and this is more of high level on that. Yeah. Ryan, do you want to answer that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Rob, I mean, that's a great question. The th Imagine kind of that funnel again. Think about this system as this, whoever controls the marketing and whoever has the best marketing is going to win all the time as far as the amount of appointments they're on, people they're touching base with. This system is creating, yeah, you know, like Jonathan's mentioning, follow-ups and helping them create that initial touch and getting them on that first meeting. Your job is to then dive into, okay, what I'm sure your broker dealer has specific planning software. And you, you're then taking that and saying, now I'm going to jump into the actual creating the financial plan. That's where the stock options come in, come into play. We do have some questions in FinPath that are related to like estate planning, just asking questions about their legal documents and wills and trusts. So there are things in there that are starting that, but it's more of, this is just guiding the conversation and creating dialogue. That's what you should be thinking about when you think of this system, which is a huge part of what we do. And I would say a higher net worth client can certainly benefit from this. I cannot tell you how many clients I'm meeting with a gentleman tomorrow. He's got over a million dollars in assets and, and he's had a financial advisor. And I sat down with him and wa walked him through FinPath. And he was like, what I just learned in the last 10 minutes going through this assessment, uh, I've not even talked about half of these conversations with my advisor. And I just provided so much value to him because I'm touching on all these areas including estate planning, including getting their will done and their power attorney, all these other things. And um, and then to answer Scott's question, um, he said, do the assets, do the questions ask about assets, accounts, et cetera? Yes, they do. Um, it gets asked them to get a ballpark uh, overview of how many assets they have in non-retirement accounts, in their IRA accounts, what are they contributing monthly? 
So it does ask those questions. And then our job on the follow-up and the actual meeting is to then ask them to, hey, let's take a look at the statements and actually get into the details. But this does get the yeah, overview and a good clean picture. So I kind of come in knowing, okay, what, what's their overall assets? What do they roughly have? And then, then I'm obviously going to clarify that when we're talking, but it is a helpful way to get that. You know, because sometimes you're, you come into the meeting or how many, how much assets you have, and you're trying to figure that out. And sometimes it's an awkward, you don't really know exactly when to ask those kind of questions. And so it's helpful when you have the software kind of give you at least an overview going into the meeting. So now you're like, okay, I have an idea of where they're at. So first and foremost, guys, I can't thank you guys enough and feel free to ask any more questions. We can touch on them, but I want to just make some closing comments, right? The, the purpose of this was not to sell software. We're not doing that. And, and I'm glad that people are actually interested. That's the purpose was really to demonstrate we should be engaging AI. I didn't bring on a 60 year old gray hair guy who's been in the business 30 years that's established getting referrals left and right. I brought in a, a guy who's early on in his career, who we all, you guys all been there. I'm, I'm looking at all the names and, and I'm sure none of you had it easy when you started out in this business, right? You all took your lumps. You all ate, I know when I first started eating hot dogs and bologna, that's what my wife and I were eating when we first, when I first started wholesale 23 years ago. I wanted you guys to see that AI is for you, right? And Jonathan is just, he's one of very few companies are actually really engaged in the wealth management industry in terms of AI. But I wanted you guys to see like what you are missing if you're not looking into this stuff, because this stuff is powerful. The amount of time I could just see Ryan doesn't have gray hair and he probably never will because he's not stressing over financial plans or, oh my gosh, I got to follow up with that person. But I think we can all yeah. imagine using ChatGTP how quickly it can create it in synopsis of whatever you put in there. And that's the beauty of this is you have, can you talk a little bit about real quickly, just your own ethos, if you will, of your AI, that it's not open. This is not like open AI. This is your own homegrown AI system. Yeah. So we're using multiple models here, right? So we're using OpenAI's GPT API. We're using Llama 2, which is open source from Meta. And we're using several models here. But the basic premise is that we don't use any client data specifically to train our AI models, right? I hope that answers your question there. Absolutely. I, I hope this was educational. I hope it was worth the hour of your time just to see what's out there, because I know Jonathan's on the cutting edge. He's one of the first companies to really dive into the wealth management industry and really put the liver for advisors. Again, this wasn't to pitch you guys software. This was really just to give you an idea of what is out there. And to give you an example, like Ryan Simonis, who's actually implementing this into his practice and is killing it. So with that, guys, I can't thank all, all enough for, for joining us. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure and hopefully we'll see you soon. All right. So take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye.